Hey guys, this is a video I just wanted to talk to you guys about preparedness. This book too. I want to thank you for making 15,000 copies in pre-sale. That's huge. I don't know the book world. I'm not a book guy. I, te I texted Jack Carr who wrote the forward for this book and I said, hey man, I, I don't know how this works. What does that look like? That's a pretty big deal. I, I don't know if it will hit the New York Times bestseller. I don't care. I really don't care. I, I don't pay attention to those specific things. I just care about preparedness as a genre being changed in the way it's thought about. What I mean is when I started a preparedness company called Phil Craft Survival, one, I had no clue what I was doing, like no idea. I thought preparedness was like the EDC pistol in your waistband, the sexy Kydex holster in the surefire light, the tourniquet you know, woven through your belt loop. <laughs> that was preparedness to me. Um, and then I realized as I was teaching some lessons learned from the military and from civ civilian experiences that the culmination of all my instructors and all the experiences of people I was talking to and their own definition of preparedness started to change what I thought Phil Craft Survival should be as a company, what a preparedness company actually is. I mean, you have companies that are preparedness companies that are like the doom and gloom, the zombie apocalypse, the EMP, that worst case scenario. And then you have like the natural disaster version of it. And then you have somewhere in between like the tactical version of that. Everybody has a tactical company. So when I look at the spectrum, it's a lot of things. And it could be overwhelming. It's overwhelming for me and I run the company. Because for a long time, I had to figure out what was practical and what was just smoke and mirrors. A lot of industries have this problem they deal with. It's like, oh, it's the sexy, it's the smoke and mirrors, but it's not anything that I'd really use. I wanted to be the utility of preparedness. Like I say often, you know, preparedness or that worst case scenario and how you're prepared or not is an equal opportunist. It doesn't care who you are, who you come from, um, where you come from, your social, political, wealth, it doesn't matter. It will hand you your ass the same, and that's important to note. Because then when I looked at how I positioned preparedness, it had specifically everything to do with utility, everything to do with practical application. So if I'm talking about stopping the bleed because I require you to carry a 72-hour assault pack on your back in your everyday carry, to have everything at once all the time, that would not be realistic. So we talk about everyday carry and, hey, it's gotta be convenient, because it's, if it's not convenient, primarily, you're not gonna do it. And so it's nice to talk about all the, we wish you would, but if you don't do it, then what's the point? So when I broke all of these things down, I broke them into the pillars of preparedness, because that's the sexy way that you formulate structure and converse and communicate to a broader audience about what this is. Ironically, this is what I've used as a manual to run the company and educate people all over the country. I mean, last year we educated 10,000 civilians. A lot of those civilians who have given us feedback, it constantly evolves, by the way. There's no like pinnacle or SOP that's standard, that we never change, we never evolve. This changes every day. Because there's always new techniques, new tactics, new procedures that will benefit you in living your most prepared life. And preparedness is not just the sexy, it's not just what the guy prefers because he has all the tools, all the cool guy gear wrapped in black multicam, but it's family preparedness. I'm more passionate about homeschooling right now than I am the flat range, running and gunning with a pistol. Because homeschooling right now as a priority is our future. If we don't get our education system together, if we don't co-op with amazing people across this country and develop assets in our own community, we are not going to raise the right people to lead the country in the future. So I'm thinking about that. And the book covers it all. Everything from EDC to Homestead to mobility, all the things. I break it down into intangible and tangible, things that like situational awareness, you can't put in your pocket but you could certainly adopt in your life. And then the tangible side of it, the physical side of preparedness that is gonna allow you to physically operate with the tools that are necessary, the training with the tools that are necessary.
Guys, it, it's been one a hell of a ride. I feel like this is only the beginning, but I, I want to make videos like this because I want to first and foremost thank you for the support. Look, I've been through a roller coaster ride of both geopolitical issues, social issues, um, controversies, and everything else. I mean, if the biggest controversy is that Mike Glover said not to dry fire, I'll take that win. But I never said not to do that. But if that's the biggest controversy, like, that's okay. But on the other side, the flip side of it, owning a preparedness company has made me a target from the U.S. government. That bums me out. But we are not going to stop. We will never stop. I won't stop because I introduce all these things into my life, like homeschooling. I'm homeschooling my kids. So I need a program. I'll make a program. I'll get with the best people in the world, the apogees of the world, the, the homeschool moms of the world, the co-ops of the world, to do it right and put out that information so you guys can get that benefit and introduce it into your lives. I think what we're doing is not about preparedness per se, but it's about culture. It's about changing culture. It's about changing mindsets. We've been giving away all of our independence for the sake of efficiency, for the sake of optimization for the sake of let me go to work so my kids can go to school to make more, my time more efficient. We gotta start taking that back, guys. And I think that's what this movement really is about. And I certainly do think it's a movement. From American contingency to Phil Kraft's survival to the things that we have going on, it's very important. And without you, without your support over the years, I mean, I started this journey four years ago. If you remember four years ago, I said I was gonna write a book. I started with writing it, hand jamming it, and then couldn't read my own handwriting and then typed it, and then presented it to publishers, and nobody wanted to touch it. Thank God Helen at Penguin Random House had the courage to go to her a publisher and say, hey, I think this is something that we need to talk about. We need to tell this story. This is three years in the making with Penguin Random House, a year to basically get vetted, and then two years of actually getting it done. I finished this book a year ago, and I'm here because of you. I wanna say thank you so much. The book releases tomorrow. Uh, I want to tell you the good news that we've, we've already done 15,000 copies. According to Jack Carr, that's enough to hit the New York Times bestselling list. But because of some of the political concerns, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. But it doesn't matter. What I know matters most is that we are affecting people in a positive way. And as long as we have your support, I'm good with it. Even if it's just one of you. I mean, I don't want one. I want like a million. Subscribe, hit the notification tab, all that stuff. Spread the good word. I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. Um, PhilCraftSurvival.com. Of note, the application, which the fact that the publisher let us do this, there's a QR code in this book, which leads us to the app for virtual education, is really cool. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for hearing me run my mouth about it. I love it. Thanks, guys.